Thank you so much. Good morning. So good to be up here ministering. I'm going to record this. I want this to go on recording because today we're going to talk about this incredible text. Wives, submit yourself unto your own husband. Wow. <laughs> Ross, come on up. Just let's end the worship. That's it, you know. What, what more do I have to say? Just listen, obey these words, ladies. Just <laughs> submit to your husbands. Nice, right? Wow. So let's pray. Father, <laughs> we need you. We need your presence. Holy Spirit, come to us like fire. The fire that came and purified, Lord. Come and purify our us, purify our relationship, purify our children, God, purify our families, Lord. Thank you. And let it begin with husband and wife, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This book that Kyle mentioned uh, began, uh, and I actually made a photocopy just to make sure I want to be accurate in this, because June 4th, 2022, I received an email from Pastor Barry. And Pastor Barry said, hey, Bob, would you be interested in ministering uh, November 13th on Colossians 4, 2 through 18? And I looked up my schedule. I said, oh, mm, well, November 13th, I'm officiating a wedding for my niece. So I'll be busy. And, so, and then he immediately said, well, what about November 6th on Colossians 3, 18? And without really thinking, without even reading the text, I said, oh, okay, sure, why not? I'll, I'll do it because schedule permit, and I'll be back from Cambodia. So, And then when I went to Cambodia, I started reading the text, and I thought, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> not, not wife, submit yourself unto your own husband now. So then I said, okay, I really got to know the context in which this is written. Context means you got to read before and you got to read after. And, and so in Cambodia, I start just doing daily morning quiet time and doing what I do, uh, writing commentaries. I've been writing commentaries. So, and then I got really into it. And then I discovered John Calvin's commentary. Uh, he's been dead so long that he has no copyright. So <laughs> 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 I could cut and paste a lot of his stuff. <laughs> and... So before I knew it, it became a book. <laughs> so in the back, I dedicate this book to you. I dedicate this book to my fellow brothers and sisters of Catalyst who encourages me to continue to take my cross daily to follow our Lord Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, God. Amen. And it's, today's segment is in page 135, Colossians 3, 18, 25. The title, Submit. Obey and reward. And on the footnote I wrote, if I'm reading this right now at Catalyst Sunday service on November 6, 2022, then I would like to say big hello to my brothers and sisters at Catalyst. <laughs> Don't you love, these days you could do a thing called pod, publish on demand, which means that Amazon does not print this book until someone orders it. Yeah, so I could edit this as much as I want. So if you get this book and find creative grammar, leave that alone because that's my creativity at work. <laughs> but if you find spelling wrong or some puncture, then let me know. Then, then I could correct it. And next guy who buys it gets the corrected version. Wow. <laughs> Praise <laughs> the Lord. Well, let's, let's get to the scripture, shall we? It says, verse 18, wives... Submit yourselves unto you, your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. Hmm. The Holman Bible says, wives, be submissive to your husband. Aramaic Bible says, wives, be subject to your husband. Hmm. Wow. The contem I love the contemporary English version. said, wife must put her husband first. Come on, brothers, help me out here. Can you say amen to that? Wives, 
you must put your husband first. That's what contemporary English version says. But the Greek, you know, every Greek has, is parsed. It is, is in certain tense. It's written in present imperative. It's not an option. Yeah. Paul did not write like, yeah, you could obey or disobey or you could submit or you don't have to submit if the guy's acting funky. <laughs> no. <laughs> he said, wives, submit to your husband, not someone else's husband. Your husband, not Dr. Phil. Your husband, whether he's respectable or not. Whoa, time out here, right? See, we're going to talk about role of husband, role of wife, role of father, and then ultimately about how does God fit into all this. God says through penship of Paul, you need to submit, you need to subjugate, you need to obey your husband. See, normally, if you know the psych psychological making of females and male, normally, women naturally love their husband. Naturally. It's amazing, and I've done enough marriage counseling to know this. No, honestly, the guy just like, even from a man-to-man -man standard, just like, <laughs> you know, not all that. You know, and he's abusive, and there's all kinds of problems. He's abusive toward her, I mean, and all that. And, and in the marriage counseling, she says, but I love him. I'm like, really? Why? Because that's how God made woman to love men. So if the Bible said, wives, love your husband, then woman have no problem. <laughs> That's what I do naturally. I don't need faith to love my husband because that's how I'm wired to do. But then when God says, now obey your husband. <laughs> In Ephesians, respect your husband. Like, huh? Him? It takes faith to see your husband as whom God has made him to be. Wives, can you say amen to that? Your role is not to change him. You cannot change him. He will not change for you because he doesn't have power. See, there's a triangular relationship happening right now in any relationship, especially marriage. Because God ordained marriage relationship to be the fundamental unit of everything that we do. You know, there could be war over there and famine and tsunami all over the world. If there is no peace, shalom at home, it don't matter. There's got to be shalom. There's got to be peace. There's got to be functioning relationship within the, the family unit. The basic unit of relationship is husband and wife. And that's how God designed. God create universe, create Adam and Eve, and gave the family as a basic unit in which now you two shall become one and you are naked before each other and not ashamed. When was the last time that you were naked before somebody and not ashamed other than your spouse? It's a fundamental relationship. So that fundamental relation has to be kicked in and, and functioning well even before your relationship with your children. It's still secondary. Now, I've seen enough, I done enough counseling to know that when there's something going wrong with husband and wife, guess what? They opt out and they said, okay, well, I, it's inconvenient to divorce, so I'm going to just live with this guy and well, I'm, now I'm going to focus my attention on my children. Who gets to suffer the most? Children. It is so unfair. For you to focus your attention and make that primary relationship. See, they don't want to be one with you. They want to be one with their spouse. <laughs> you know, it's, it's a whole Asian thing, you know. Especially, you know, I, I really worry when I marry someone who's a mama's boy. I'm like, oh, come on, man. Grow up, right? <laughs> and so every wedding I conducted, I would actually formally request that parents let him go. He said, please, mom and dad, would you let him go so that he would be independent, so he could cling to his wife and become one, right? And of course, it's, you know, public meeting, so they will say, okay, but inside, no, he's my son, 
I will not let him go. <laughs> Asian mama, you know. <laughs> so, even the fundamental relationship is at work. Why is God saying, not love your husband, but you need to submit to your husband? And listen, the next verse, husband, love your wives. See, naturally, man respect woman. It's harder for men to love their spouse than to respect. Because guys normally just like, yeah, yeah, she's, and you know, we honor our wives. And it's easy to do that, easier to do that than to actually love her. The word love is unconditional, agapeo. It's not phileo, it's not arrows. It's agape love. You need to unconditionally, man, love your wife. And he says, do not bitter against them or make them resentful toward you because of the responsibility of marriage. I, we were at funeral and we're, I was at graveside service uh, Friday. And, you know, as you go there, you always walk and read people's tombstone, right? And there's a, now uh, in, in, in Rose Hill, there is, Couples, you know, they bury together, you know. And it's really interesting to know what children said about them. I have not yet when read one tombstone with the score 7,905 and 12,000. Dad won the argument with mom. <laughs> Think about that. You know, it's, it sounds silly, but hmm. But a lot of our time, guys... We spend trying to win the argument. A lot of the non-shalom environment in home because we're trying to be right. I'm right. You're wrong. Or on a petty things, like stuff that you don't even remember two days later what you're fighting about. You're fighting as if life depends on it. Right? You think about that. And like, people don't write like, oh, yeah, he, he, he what? He was victorious over the little arguments with their wives and put it on tombstone. No, it doesn't work that way. Life is not that silly, right? We need to give these petty things, right position. Let her win the argument. Just win her heart. Amen? But this was so profound. No response here. Come on, this side. <laughs> Let her win the argument, but win her heart. There are two kinds of people in this world <laughs> who understand such profound thought. Right? Don't, don't win. Try to win argument. Let her win. Let him win. But let's be together one. Enjoy each other. We've been married for 38 years now. Going on 39. You know. In, in my early days, and I'm like, being right was so important. Winning that argument was so important. Feeling like I know better is so important. I don't know, maybe the age, th age thing, I'm just getting old and a lot of female hormones kicking in. It just, <laughs> it, it really don't matter much, you know. It's like, okay, whatever, honey, you know. Okay, <laughs> can we move on now? Right? I mean, it's like she... My wife is so passionate about food. It's like she has to eat what she wants to eat. And like at least one time in my life, I would like to eat something I want to eat. <laughs> you know. So the other day we were going out. I said, honey, hey, I just really feel like Chinese food today. Can we go Chinese food? She said, nope, Korean. And so... <laughs> Maybe after this message, you'll submit to me and <laughs> let me have my Sam Wu in Cerritos, please. But actually, used to, I used to get aggravated by it. No, no longer. It's like, whatever, you know. Okay, let's do Korean today because Chinese day will come someday. You know. <laughs> Verse 20 says, children, obey your parents in all things. For this is well-pleasing 
to the Lord. It's amazing how God connects, the word of God connects, obeying parents with the Lord. Because the word obey is in the voice of the Father. It means actually disobedience always written in context of disobedience in the rebellion to God. So as a children, what we must be learn to, to obey. I mean, it's a simple thing. It's not complicated, right? Mr. Miyagi taught us, wax on, wax off. How hard it is that? I mean, it's just like, come on, Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi cannot be wrong. Right? Wax on, wax off. And you do that without even understanding, wow, right? <laughs> Someone kicks you, psh, whoa, what happened? Oh, you know I'm talking about karate kid, right? It's like, no one's laughing, I'm thinking, am I the only one who watched that movie? That has become my life principle. Wax on, wax off, you know. Children don't have to understand the deep meaning of the importance of reading Bible and praying every day. If the parents tell you, let's read Bible together every day. Let's offer prayer to the Lord every day. Children, shut up and obey. <laughs> don't get into theological argument with your parents. Well, why do I? I am, I'm American. I got my right. Don't say things like that. It's pray every day, read Bible, and someday the enemy will take you. Whoa. <laughs> Daddy told me to read Bible every day. The enemy attacks, and you're going to find out someday that your disobedience to your parents was rebellion to God. And when all these things come together, it makes sense. I said, yes, Lord. Wow, I need to, the wives need to submit and subject to themselves, to their husband, husband to love their wives, children to obey and honor father and mother as the Old Testament. And then it says, Father, do not aggravate, agonize your children in anger. Don't tell them and let, try to live your life through them. This is more Asian context. This is more Asian context, you know, because uh, it's amazing. There are something like 30,000 different kind of jobs in America. There are 13,000 different kinds of jobs in Korea. The Korean parents narrow it down to four. <laughs> Doctor, lawyer, engineer, business, that's it. <laughs> so this young Asian kid, mama, I think I want to be a writer. Writer, no, lawyer. You know, it's like, Mom, I want to be a dancer. Dancer, no, doctor. <laughs> and aggravate the children. They're trying to live God's calling in their lives, and yet we tell them what's good for them. Because it was good for my uncle who was a doctor and made rich and lived happily ever after. But that's not, your son is not your uncle. And yet we insist I'm right and aggravate. So Bible says, please don't do that. I will call individually. I will tell them what they ought to do. And I will give them calling that they have to live and die for. Amen? Set them free. Set them free. They, they want to live a life. And, and more than just telling them what to do, teach them how to listen to God's voice. Right? You know, we just spent three months in Cambodia. I just flew in a couple of weeks ago. And... What really upsets me every time I come back to America nowadays is that now, officially, pho is 15 bucks. <laughs> That's just very upsetting. There's nothing in pho that should cost 15 bucks. <laughs> it's just noodle and broth, a little bit of meat. Why is it 15 bucks, right? Because I just spent in three months in Cambodia. My breakfast is $1.25. So nice. A little bit of pork, rice, and soup, right? Oof, $1.25. And then after that, I go to my coffee shop, and I have my cappuccino for $1.25. $2.50, I'm done. I'm happy. Come here. What? Pho is 15 bucks. You have to teach your children to pho. <laughs> P-H-O. Pray, hear, and obey. So every time you take your children to fall, I say, children, 
That's all you have to do. Life is not that complicated. Just fight. Pray, hear God, what God has to say, and obey. Why do we complicate our lives? Like, oh, I don't know if this is, oh, what did God tell you to do? Right? Why are you competing with friends that you don't even like, with life that you don't even want to live? Just because you became successful in a certain field, that doesn't mean you're not significant in your own field. Amen? And yet, if someone becomes so well and whatever, and then we begin, oh, well, I don't I feel uncomfortable, you know. I just had a, a, a coffee with a friend. He's a brilliant man. In college, he started his business, and he was already driving convertible BMW. I mean, that guy's brilliant. He graduated, starts a company. He sold his company for $250 million, <laughs> you know, like, and retired. So, and then he's my motorcycle buddy, so we ride motorcycle together, and, and we're just having coffee in L.A., because I happened to go to L.A. And we, so I said, hey, we're having coffee, and then he reminded me. He said, Bob, you know, you wrote several poetry books in Korean. Yeah, yeah. You gave me one of the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, one of the poetry, actually, you're writing about me. I said, really? He <laughs> said, I forgot. He said, yeah, he said, one of my best friends became so rich, he became arrogant, and I don't like him, or something like that, you know? <laughs> that was my poetry. <laughs> See, I'm, I'm trying to be brutally honest with myself and my feeling, you know? I'm a poet. So I said, did that offend you? I said, no, I thought it was cute. And we, we're still good friends, and we don't make money an issue when we ride motorcycle together. You know, when you ride motorcycle to Baja, Mexico in 10 days, we're about to die every day. So <laughs> what is the point of being jealous or comparing, you know? We're the buddies. We're going to die together, you know, and we're riding through the storm and all that. Makes us unite. <laughs> and he just mentioned briefly that, yeah, you know, I, I, when I became that successful, I started losing a lot of friends. Because they start competing and comparing and, well, I, I, I don't want to be with him because he's like, you know, have you met someone who made $250 million? You know? <laughs> Going to a restaurant together and he tried to buy you and then, yeah, I mean, friend could buy, but then, you know, are you doing that because you're rich? You know, <laughs> we have this all oh, twisted idea about him because why? We're constantly comparing, constantly competing in this silly game. Why can't we just say, Thank God for you. That's the life you live. And I, because I am happy every day being who I am. You know what happened after that coffee meeting? As we were going, I don't have a car. Janie had to go somewhere. So I rode my motorcycle to LA. He was here, he this brand new Tesla, the, the highest model, whatever. And, and, he, and then he looked at me and said, Bob, really, I envy you. I'm thinking, oh, really? <laughs> I envy you, man. You are so free. The Bible said, you shall know Jesus the truth, and truth will set you free. Let's be free. Let's be healed. A lot of our conflict in marriage because we start competing and comparing and competing with someone that you don't even like. Try to live a life that God hasn't ordained you to live. Marriage conflict starts out with finance and relationship and all that. I'm going to ask Pastor Jenny to come up, my wife, and she will submit to me, you know, so when I tell her to come up. <laughs> you watch the Word of God being lived out in action, all right? And, and so, because and I, I really feel like there will be healing taking place today. Because we're going to talk, I, we talked about physical healing, but I really said, because when I was praying for this meeting, the word was Purity. And the purity comes when fire comes and burn all the straws out of our relationship. Amen? Let's, let's not fight. Let's not fight over small things. Let's not get in this tension where these things will not matter for eternity. Let's, let's bring it to a point where it says, now the finally, it says in the scripture, wow, this is powerful. Knowing Verse 24, that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward for inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Jesus Christ. All that you do relationally, remember I told you it's triangle? God above, 
And you and your husband, your wife and spouse and your children, all these relationships down here, it's directly connected to God. And if that relationship pans out in, in, in rock solid condition and you live your life knowing that what you do on, in this temporal world has eternal consequence and look for that reward, I said reward, not gift. There's a difference. The word reward is compensation. See, if the scripture, the King James said compensation, then people could understand. But a lot of times the modern man and woman think reward is a gift. It's not. Reward is something that you work very, very hard for. You earn it. You earn the reward. You get the gift. See, but people, the enemy has twisted our mind to think that, yeah, I live a Christian life. God loves me, so I'm going to receive a great reward. No, what have you done for the Lord? Nothing. Then why do you think you're going to get re reward? Well, because God loves you. Yeah, God loves you. God saved you. But reward in heaven is earned by what you do. That's what the Word of God says. Reward here is compensation. It's almost like payment. So then what do we do with this life? See, I want my life to matter. I want to live a shalom life where I could be one with my wife and, and, and we live with children and now we live two. We used to be two rabbits and, but can you believe raccoon came and killed one of the rabbits and took it? That was tragic. It was the first thing that happened. So now we have one rabbit and one cat and whatever we do, think that it's just stuff that happens. You know, okay, well, 22 came and 2022 comes and then people live, people die. No, all that we do here is going to have eternal consequence. And there'll be reward in heaven based on what you've done for the Lord. And for that reward to kick in, you want to make sure that your relationship with your wife and husband, your children, is squeaky clean. And it's in understanding so that you will not have this unsettled feeling. You, you don't have this grudge that you haven't forgiven. And you, you kind of live with your spouse, but you're not really together, together emotionally, spiritually. There's no oneness there. Well, let's break that. Let's heal that today. Amen. Pastor Jenny, come on up. We'll just do spend some time in prayer. There is only really understanding the three basic questions of life. Does God exist? Does God exist? Amen? Yeah, this is not atheist church or anything like that, right? So God, God does exist. That's why you're here. But what did he tell you to do with your life? And how are you doing with that? Right? Or is your life just full of stuff that you do in this earth? And has no eternal consequence. Wow. I, I really want to, in a way, you know, this morning, the intercessor, they keep on telling. They came up to me. Two, dif two different people came up and prayed over me and said, fire. I see fire coming. I said, the fire purifies. And so I, it, it made sense to me because a month ago I was praying for this meeting. Well, six months, I've been writing a commentary <laughs> for this meeting. And a month ago, I was praying, and the word was purity. I think God wants to purify the basic fundamental relationship and to bring healing. Amen? And if we could have some keyboardists or come and just minister as Pastor Jenny leads in prayer. I obey. Why don't we pray? I think it's important that truly it really does start with fa. I mean, if you think about it, what can we really do for God? Unless there is this thing called being in the right position with the Lord. And as we pray and as we hear the voice of God, of his heart, as we become one, that's when we can obey. We don't do random things for God for the sake of doing something for God. But truly when we pray and when we hear him, when we love him, when we fall in love with him, we submit to him. And I think that that kind of position 
is what the Lord is talking about when he said, wives, submit to your husband. It's in the position of humility in this primary relationship that we have. And our children, the love relationship we have for, with one another. How wonderful it is that God does not burden us and say, you must do this and this and that. But he says, position yourself and be ready that you may be able to do it with all the armor of God and the giftings and the authority and the power so that we can be fruitful and we can be the one that that ex extravagant, that we experience the 30, 60, 100 fold. So why don't we just come now? Let's position ourselves for Fa. Let's position ourselves and let's pray unto the Lord. If there are people here that has been away from the Lord and are not connected with him, this is the time. This is the time when we can connect with him and say simply with the faith as the small as a mustard seed, the small faith in trusting in him and saying, Lord, here I am. I position myself to listen, and I want to be with you. I want to connect with you. And if there are people that are having a hard time with relationship, whether it's a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship or it's even just married or you've been married for a long time, that you may be so familiar with one another, and yet you're not intimate anymore with your husband and wife. This is the time. This is the time when we can say, Lord, I... I admit this, and I want to connect with my husband. I don't want to judge and be critical. I submit, and I forgive. So why don't we just come to the Lord and just, you could be silent or you could just, praying words, but just let's bring all these things to the Lord at this time. Let's pray. Father, thank you. I feel the Lord is saying that I, it, I just um, be just uh, in our small group, bake the beautiful cake for your Daniel's birthday. And I just keep thinking about that cake because it was so beautiful and it was so simple but so pretty and elegant. And I don't know, something about that cake that there was a like a, um, uh, like a frosting or the topping just it just kind of ran down and um, it really like soaked in to the rest of the cake to make it more flavorful. I I just think that about our relationship, especially marriage. I feel that there are areas that we haven't allowed the Holy Spirit to um, come in. Maybe it's a little bit of agitation judgments, criticisms, or habitual things that we say or do, if there, if there is such thing in your marriage, maybe this is the time for us to submit to the Lord and 
say, I don't want this anymore. I want to change. Mm. So why don't we just mm. confess these things to the Lord and um, ask him to um, help us set us free. So why don't we do that at this time? Secondly, I sense for the relationship between parents and children, and there, this is a family service, so there are or catalyst children and adult children here. And I want to just say one thing that don't hide. Um, a lot of times that we want to not face um, hard things, and maybe there are some people here, children or um, young adults here that uh, don't want to just keep put it, putting it off and not showing affection or showing um, or connecting with the parents and maybe just wanting to hide um, and don't want to really um, have to face things. Um, I, I just sense that from the Lord. Uh, so if that's you, if that if you've been putting things off, it's not because you're rebellious or because you don't want to. Maybe, um, maybe like there's some attitude issues or whatever. But it's kind of like not wanting to face things and wanting to just hide it, thinking that maybe um, your parents don't understand. Or and I think that it it needs to. Uh, we need to bring it to the Lord. So if that's you, um, I think you need to bring it to the Lord at this time. And I want to just actually do the prayer of breakthrough that the relationship between parents and children, whether you're old children or young children, Father, I ask that your anointing of breakthrough will come through. Break, break, break those bondages, break those enemies attack and all this relational entanglement that has made their relationship awkward and they no longer really communicate. Father, I pray against that, right? Father, I pray that you bring forth, Lord, your shalom that surpasses all understanding, mm -hmm. that sweet spirit, sweet spirit, Father. I pray the conversation will flow, the walls will be broken, and there will be no, Father, uh, this awkwardness, Lord God, and I just pray that sweet spirit that brings family together, conversation and, and openness and, and, and being honest, and Father, that will bring forth, Lord, your spirit into the families, Father, of Catalyst. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And for the fathers and mothers, for their children, and I think that we're just following the scriptures and their... Um, and their instructions. Um, it says not to aggravate your children. Um, I think that sometimes uh, I sense the Holy Spirit saying that sometimes we give half instructions, not full instructions, that somehow that there are things like incomplete thoughts and we don't pray through and somehow it just kind of is at our emotional state area where we don't fully commit to what we say to our children and we don't live out the example of what we want from what we desire from our children and I, I feel that we need to confess this, these things where um, that truly that our lives, uh, that we need to make a commitment to how we live because that give us authority to what we say and the kind of things that we demand. So not out of emotional annoyance or irritations, 
but out of commitment that we speak to our children, commitment to our own lives. So being able to communicate fully with all authority, I think God desired for us as parents. So it is, this is what I really sense that we need to do. So why don't we just take a moment to respond to the Lord. Father, we come in your presence. As we heard the words of this beautiful book, you care so much for us. You want our families and our relationship to thrive and enjoy each other. Freedom, shalom, that surpass all understanding, manifesting, our children obeying, we loving each other, submitting to one another. God, heaven on earth, Lord, let it manifest in our families, Lord God. What enemy has taken, we get it back. We want it back, Lord. They will not live half-baked life, Lord, but a beautiful cake that represents fullness, sweetness, completeness. We thank you. We give you glory. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's give God a big hand, shall we? Thank you so much for joining us for our online service. Hope you will join us in person sometime. It would be great to see you and meet you. Don't forget to subscribe to our Catalyst YouTube channel so you don't miss out on anything. And be blessed this week. And as always, thank you, Jesus.